record setting about this when you do it in earnest on uh, Friday. It'll be the height and I'm going to do a turnover from a straight sitting repeal. A lot happening here on Public Square right now. It could be the biggest party ever in downtown Cleveland. Happy birthday Terminal Tower. We're going to see a man run down outside the tower next on Eyewitness News. What grew out of that simple need for a railroad is what we see out here. Actually the centerpiece of downtown Cleveland and it's certainly the centerpiece of this great city tonight. Uh, Eric Braun is at ground level with another of our TV5 action cams live. And Eric, tell us what's happening down there. Well, Jeff, down here in Public Square, it's the proverbial sea of humanity. We just have thousands of people here for Bill DeRoyer's descent. But right now, Bill DeRoyer is a man very much alone. He spends this final hour in deep meditation before making that 700-foot descent. He's an Army Ranger, a fascinating guy. We're going to profile his life tonight at 11, but we're going to carry that descent live. We understand now we're about 15 minutes away from his descent down the face of the Terminal Tower. So we'll be standing by here at the party in the park for Bill DeRoyer's descent. Eric, on the uh, gold leaf tip at the absolute top of the terminal, you can't get any higher than that. And he's going to try to come down the whole 700 feet to set a world's record. And as you see, there are thousands of people waiting and watching. That's a long drop, too, Jeff. And I might add that he makes that drop head first in what they call an Australian rappel. So it's going to be something to behold. We'll be having that for you live on TV5. Stay with us. And we'll have more on the terminal. It's past, it's birthday, and it's future. And we'll be coming back here right away when our daring mountain climber begins his climb down from the top. But right now, my partner, Ted Henry, is back at the studio with some of the other important news of this day. Ted? Back to Jeff now and see if that guy's ready to come down yet, Jeff. He hasn't moved, Ted. He's uh, he's right at the edge up there and could be ready at any time. It's, uh, it's kind of a crap shoot for us to decide to stay here with him or, or go on. Uh, but we're going to roll it this way. We're going to uh, continue with what we have. And if Bill... Oh, no, here he comes. I see him now getting up on the edge, so we're going to stay with this. Bill DeRoyer... We're coming over the edge. He's only come down about a fourth of the distance of Terminal Tower from the gold tip in this step so far. Eric, if you can hear me and uh, are live, join in here and help me describe this, because I know you know more about it than I do. Well, uh, Jeff, let me explain the mechanics. Of this. One of the problems in a drop of this distance is the heat factor. He has uh, just a friction break on the front of his body, and as he makes this long descent, that heat builds up to the point where it could actually ignite the gloves that he wears on his hands. Wow. And... Uh, in practice yesterday, here he comes. He burned his hands making a practice drop for our uh, cameras. That man is, is up about 30 stories right now. Right. Better than 30 stories. No, that's the 40th uh, floor he's at, Jeff, 40? that ledge. Yeah. All right, he's uh, paused momentarily. He's adjusting his rigging. And uh, this is the most dangerous part. He's going to pause and push himself off from the building only when he's absolutely sure that those air currents don't uh, interfere with the drop. This is truly the most dangerous part, Jeff. I didn't hear you say, Eric, and you may have, is he uh, connected to that rope by anything but his hands? Does he have a clip or something that's holding him on there? Right, he has a clip and a friction break and one wrap of rope around his body in order that he can uh, stop himself should his uh, descent uh, get out of control. And uh, you can hear him huffing and puffing and grunting and groaning on our exclusive TV5 wireless mic. Oh, that's Bill. I, that didn't, is, I didn't realize that. that that's is, him. That's Bill hopping and puffing up there. Let's listen carefully. We'll hear this descent when he begins to drop. You'll hear the rope sliding through his harness through that friction oh brake. Now, let's listen. Concentration cannot be broken, so he would not consent to be interviewed during this. But he 
said we could eavesdrop as he makes this world record setting descent. Wow. Yeah. It looks like he's in control, Eric. He's in control, and he's going to come down head first here as soon as he re, uh, reorients himself. That rope is barely a half inch in diameter, Jeff. That's mountaineering rope. It's especially strong, and uh, 2,000 feet of it would only weigh about 100 pounds. But uh, it has a tensile and a brake strength that's very high, so he's uh, got a lot of reliance on that. I hope he's in control. This is the, the biggest descent of this kind ever tried. And, uh, he's hopping and puffing, as you can hear. It's not easy work, as uh, we learned exclusively. He's only being paid $1,000. I don't know if you've mentioned this, Eric, but someone said today that this is what a movie stuntman has to do if he wants to make a name for himself as a stuntman, to, to find an event like this and make news and uh, move up in the ranks of Hollywood stuntmen. That's right. When he has his name in that Guinness Book of World Records, as he will after today, uh, he will be a very marketable commodity in Hollywood. Bill hopes that this gives him the name that will enable him to move his home base of operations from Columbus, Ohio, to Hollywood, California. It looks to me like he's about 20 floors up now. Uh, You're up right. Up. He will descend to what is the fourth floor right at that clock level. Oh. Oh. And there he is. That was the most dangerous part of the descent yet. Right. God damn. Oh. I think I was ever going to get it. He's all right. We hear him talking to his crew members. <laughs> Apparently, because of wind currents, we're told here on the ground, Jeff, that he was not That's able okay, to do the uh, headlong rappel. Let him wait. Uh-huh. I wonder if we can hear what he's saying. Ah, fuck. He was not satisfied with the uh, way his uh, line was uh, wrapped, and he was not satisfied with wind currents, which uh, prevented him from going into the true Australian rappel head first. Nonetheless, this is a record-breaking event because of the distance involved on the face of the terminal tower. Yeah, we do. It was truly amazing. I don't know if people at home... I thought maybe that was Bill talking, but he sounds like somebody who's just run a 12-mile race. Yes, he's, he does. Uh, just breathing. I don't know if people had any idea from watching on television what that looked like to see a man coming down the face of the terminal tower full tilt, but it took my breath away. Eric, thank you very much. I guess that's it. He's not coming all the way down to ground level. That's the stop there, huh? He's, uh, he's going to switch lines and come, come down in a couple of minutes as soon as he reorients. We've certainly seen the most dramatic part of it, and we may be catching Bill coming down to a crowd of thousands of people who want to cheer him a little later on. Thank you, Eric. Sure, Jeff. Until now, we've been looking at uh, the part of the tower that we can see up above ground. And uh, there is a whole lot more of Terminal Tower down below ground, as most of you know, if you ever took trains through there. More than $12 million is about to be spent in the part that we seldom see. Pictures of the plans are still secret, and not many shops have been signed up for this new part of Terminal Tower.